What website were you scammed by and how much money in total? Was J4L, uh, Jump for Love, probably looking at around at least 10 grand. Hello, Charlie. Hello. You're live. Welcome, fellow Canadian. Yes, you indeed, doing? from the West Coast, too. Yeah, Thank yeah. Where are you on you Vancouver Island? No, no, not that far. That's about as far west as we can go. I'm actually where, where in Greater Vancouver by Surrey. Oh, you're in Surrey. Ah, okay, okay, West yeah. Surrey. Cool. Yeah, I lived. I lived in Surrey. I lived in Abbotsford. I lived in. Oh my gosh, I lived in I Newton. I lived in Ab. Yeah, Ab Chilliwack. I lived in North Vancouver, downtown Vancouver, <laughs> all over for 28 years. So I wouldn't want to live in North Vancouver. The bridge during rush hour. No thanks. <laughs> Yeah, it's nasty. So first, Charlie, yeah, thank you for coming on. I, I know you um, you have a bit of a hard story to tell us, um, but really it's the best way of helping pay it forward and helping some guy watching this video um, understand how these scams work by sharing your story. So thank you very much. You're welcome. I think a lot of people have no idea, especially if they have no idea about the culture and whatnot. So they'll find it very difficult to actually believe something like this. But there are little telltale signs that uh, you can come across that you can point you in the right direction for the truth. Sorry, sorry. I, I glitched out there for a second. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Uh, yeah, it, it, there's telltale tell stories. It's such a slippery slope. There's so, I mean, uh, where does this come from? But my, what a web we weave when at first we do we deceive. deceive. It's yeah. just a, such a web of deception. It's just a mind bleep of epic proportions, isn't it? So I agree with yeah, you. Yeah. A friend of mine uh, from Moscow had actually uh, told me uh, a lot about this type of thing that goes on so regularly and he said oh can i uh, give you a call for a second so uh he gave me uh, a pretty big insight as to what really happens that a lot of people don't know about especially if you're not like one of those uh sex tourists and whatnot that would go there for that mm -hmm. then they have this idea they know what they're looking for and uh someone mm -hmm. who's actually just looking for someone else or just uh well as I've heard before, there's uh, street approach and whatnot, but uh, it's a whole different ball of wax. So, Charlie, can, can I start the interview by asking what website were websites were you scammed by, and how much money in total was J4L uh, Jump for Love? And I can only speculate the total because what they do is, of course, they have this drastic paper letter scheme where you actually have to pay and sometimes uh, i'm not really sure i sometimes they add more if you have to put a uh, well, just roughly ballpark. Uh, ten thousand fifty thousand uh just ballpark oh i i'm gonna say around uh, uh just off the top of my head uh probably looking at around at least 10 grand total okay okay so how how did it all start for you? Can you maybe can you pull your camera because you're getting almost out of camera now? Can you? Uh, yeah, and yeah, yeah, that's better. Yeah, yeah, we can see all of you now. Um, how did it all start for you? How did you get drawn into this? Um, initially, I did a internet search, and during this internet search, I. Uh, went on a site called Trustpilot so I could try to navigate what they seemed to be trustable, uh, trustworthy sites. And um, boy, did I learn. Um, there's actually a business about people who actually act as companies interested in pushing a certain brand for a certain fee. And um, I thought, wow, that seems extreme. I mean, to... Uh, to lie about something and just push forth this idea. I mean, like, uh, I guess, you. yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, um, and there, I guess there is no way to verify that I'm aware of uh, how valid the particular um, people are who are making their entries. So it's hard to know. And, and if I can just segue in there and say, 
Um, yeah, you're spot on. And this is why we do as many videos with clients as possible because you can't fake a video, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, but the truth is, um, including the name that you mentioned, they're supposed to be the gold standard of reviews. But yeah, I had a guest on, on Scam School 1. His name is Brian. He's an IT back-end kung fu wizard, okay? Mm -hmm. And he, um, he posted, I forget the number of reviews, but he posted reviews of all the sites he was scammed by. It got a total of a million hits oh. in total. So a lot of, a, and they were all, ex except for one, they were all pulled from Trustpilot. So how is that possible? They were all removed. And yeah. on top of that, I can share what happens is, these scam agencies, especially the big boys, they spend a lot of money, in some cases millions, to um, reputation management firms. And that's what, what they do is they, they, they lie and say, this, is, this guy, you know, it's whatever they say, but they get the, the reviews removed, scrubbed, and then anything that they can't get rid of on the World Wide Web, they bury it to page five. All uh, right, yeah. So yeah you never right. go, nobody goes to page five or page four or right. page ten. You're you, you see five or six or 10 good reviews and then you just, oh, it must be all right. Yeah, exactly. That's what everybody does. Yeah. Okay. So please continue. Um, yeah. yeah. Went to pilot, you checked out Jump for Love or? Yeah. And I, I didn't find any, I found a few bad ones in there, but very, brief, you know, just like not worth it, that kind of thing. Or uh uh, ladies don't contact you or something like this and um, mm -hmm. every now and again but and then there would be contradictory um, entries saying like oh I don't know about all these comments but I've had a really good experience and I found my last girlfriend on J4L and so well can't really uh, verify one way or the other because I don't know who that person is to be able to contact them but I mean and then again as you said you could be uh, just basically contacting someone who's been hired to help uh, clean up somebody's bad review so to speak bad reputation mm -hmm. so this is your girl on jump for love yeah uh yes so the first question that begs, and somebody's already asking it in chat, how old are you and how old is she? Uh, I think we have a uh, tw 20, 20 year difference on us. So how yeah. old are you? How old are you? I'm 55. Uh, and I think she's now 35 from what I understand. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. But she's a beautiful 35, eh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, she got a wholesome kind of beauty to her. And uh -huh. um, yeah. the th thing is, I've also also know about some of these tricks so i actually tried uh shortly before the war came on i mm -hmm. had attempted to get you know because i've got the contact information so i thought well my next now is to try to get a um a, a visual a real visual a, um real-time visual so because i don't know for sure that uh, this beautiful woman is not as you put it, Igor. And so, uh, yeah, right. So I think, yeah. so I tried a couple of times in, in a couple of emails to uh, get her to agree to something like uh, Skype or something. And um, it was like one of those insight, uh, not incidental things where it seemed one of those just what wasn't answered, you know, just, uh, seemed innocuous at first but then i tried again and it seemed twice so i i still honestly to this day don't know if this is who i mean i would have eventually would have had to have uh, made some meeting arrangements and then having to do that i would have probably you know i mean if it's her great if it's not her you know she simply would never show up and uh Probably uh, wise to, I, I listen to some of those ones uh, who are scammers on the line and they say that uh, when they did try to meet someone, they would actually say, oh, no, no, I was there. Where were you? And yeah, so, yeah. Round on you, right? Just like, no, no, I know I was there at this day, at this time. And it's not the same, you know, like, uh, I guess it's a minor form of gaslighting, if you will. 
Yeah. Okay. So you so you met this lady. It's Katerina, yeah, on Jump for Love. Yeah. Katerina. How, how did you meet her? When did you meet her? How long did you guys chat? Did you go to Ukraine to meet her? Um, no, I didn't get the chance to go to Ukraine to meet her because essentially, just after things were getting to the point where we figured we should do this, that's when the war broke out. It was uh, actually about mid-February, and it broke out on the 24th. And so after that, things went a little bit um, different. Um, you know, like, I mean, I heard, and I could hardly believe it, and one to one extent, I could hardly believe it, but to another extent, learning how prevalent scamming can be, it's almost like, to what end will they not go to try to secure some form of scam? What had happened with this, uh, she had initially put through email that her, uh, her house had been hit by one of the rockets or had been near hit kind of thing. There was damage to the house. Yes, that's right. That's the one. And uh, she said that her family had uh, run out at nighttime and I think went to a village about 50 kilometers away and um, took refuge in a different house. At least that's what I was told. And I hadn't heard from her for a while so I wasn't sure and I had no idea because she was also always talking about how much she loved her her dog and her her horse and everything she had a big horse and it was a, a seven-year-old horse and I think that uh, it was pretty much well what she loved the most and so I thought well I wondered about these how you know if or something bad happened to them, and um, I don't know. I, I never heard. And then later on, you know, she mentioned later on in email, they would say that, oh, no, I lost Eliz Elizabeth is the name of the horse. And um, there was a cute dog that she had there, too, a little white dog. And um, uh, I don't know what happened to the little white dog. And uh, there's a picture of her somewhere holding the little white dog and um, a very nice dog. But the thing is, though, like uh, she told me about these stories about she had to go down in the basement and feeling trapped, not being sure whether or not Russian troops would approach the house and if not risk being killed. And of course, I can't assess their damage in their location. And so she basically had say that she would be able to get some internet here and there, spotty internet. But I mean, you know, like uh, that's when I, I realized I had very little to lose. So I thought, oh, you know what? I, I really would like to see that you're okay. And I'd like to see how you're doing. If maybe you could, uh, if you've got internet, as you, ha you seem to have to send me the email, maybe you could get on Skype so I can see that you're okay. And, uh, well, she had uh, reason not to do that. She said, basically, well, I can't just control this because hey, every time I send the email, uh, it, it's not every time I'm able to get online kind of thing. So, um I can attest to my own spotty, but there's no war zone here, but the own spotty uh, internet connection with Shaw. Whoops, did I drop that name? Um, and essentially, um, it's it's not good. And so, you know, like even at the best of times when there's not a war going around, going on around you, you just basically try to make the best of what you got. There have been times when I've been trying to actually send an email, took seven times to get reconnected again. So it was ridiculous. But um, with Kate, uh, basically I would try periodically to do that. And she would become a little bit defensive that I should be thinking more sensitively regarding that there is a war going on around her and she's just trying to uh, survive. And then later on, she did mention that there was this company run by a guy named John. I forget what uh, the company's name is, but uh, it's about, it was a catering company 
And what this catering company did was try to cater, uh, forgive the word, cater to the uh, uh, other people that are trying to struggle to survive during the war. And, you know, uh, some of them have even been offered uh, for a fee, a price to go to a NATO country like Poland or Slovakia or something. So um, that was two things. Like, um, I didn't know. I didn't want to actually think about whether or not she was really in those kind of dire straits. So I think for 400 US, you could send a, a food package to last three or four weeks or something like that. And John's company would allegedly ship it at their risk to the wherever the coordinates might be. And uh, I'm, I had a little trouble with this because I'm thinking like, well, this is really convenient. But at the same time, I'm thinking like, wow, wouldn't I be the jerk of the year if this was actually really happening to her, right? I mean, damned if you do. Yeah, Rock in a hard you, place, hey, Charlie. Yeah, pretty much. Yes, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, you don't want to actually say like, oh, no, I don't believe this is happening. And I mean, and God help you if you come across like that, because I mean, you're just like the most unfeeling creature in the world. And, you know, I mean... So I just thought, okay, well, I, I can, I can do that for, you know, like, uh, you know, like I, I, there's was U S currency. So for me, like uh, 400 was closer to 500 in there for uh, U S versus Canadian currency. And so I did send one package in there, but of course I later started to, get suspect to this because what had happened was in spite of how dire it is, she's always eventually able to get to a spot where she can send an email and how convenient that is. Um, I mean, she would basically send, Oh, this is horrible. The conditions I see corpses around and, you know, horrify the um, situation. And of course, trying to appeal to people on an emotional level that would tend to make them more suggestible to what sort of thing you want to lay on them. So I, uh, I thought, well, this, this, I think what was uh, for uh, an evacuation out of the place, um, I think it was 4,100 and, some odd dollars and like $50 or something and change American and which is about 3 billion Canadian, as you know. <laughs> so um, anyway, maybe pesos. Maybe pesos. So, so <laughs> let's pause for a second. So guys, I just want to make sure everybody heard. She's mm -hmm. now saying, listen, my life is in jeopardy. Can you please get me out of Dodge? You mm -hmm. know, I'm afraid I'm going to die. I need 4,100 USD. Yeah. Yeah. And the so thing is, you about... can't really deny that. Yeah. Well, it's 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 a heinous crime to to manipulate, you know, with such a pretense of, you know, I'm your life. My life is in your hands. Right. Like, ah, oh, this That's is one of the worst. That's an awful feeling. feeling. That's an awful tell us, feeling. tell us, how did you feel when this happened? Because you're obviously a guy with good head in his shoulders. You know, you, you got the spidey senses tingling, red flags going off, but you're going like, hey, is there a chance that she might be telling me the truth? And what if she dies because of me? Tell us, what was, what was going on in your heart and mind, Charlie? I was thinking, man, would I be the biggest piece of shit on this planet if I was to actually cause or let her die when I could have done something to potentially save her indirectly at the very least. And, you know, like, when you think about it, even if it's costly for you to save a life like that, of course it's worth four or five, six grand or whatever it is. Right. And I would tend to agree with that statement as you put it. Um, the yeah. thing is um, the understatement of the year. Yes. <laughs> like yeah, very much. Ethics and morals. <laughs> <laughs> a little understated. Yes. Just yeah, a little yeah. bit. But I mean, uh, it's like, of course, like, for example, say you uh, have some thug on the street wielding a knife or a hammer and trying to 
uh, smash someone's skull in. And of course you come across it. And even if you can beat this guy or you hold him at bay or whatever, and you say, what do you need to get, uh, you know, get this person off? You know, I, I just need a thousand dollars or whatever. Of course you'd pay the thousand dollars to get him gone. I mean, if there's no other way out, that is, but I mean, if you just smash them, you just smash them. But the thing is, though, if you're in a situation where someone else is at somebody else's mercy like this, and you have very limited time, you have very limited options in terms of what you can play, and then you have to pretty much put a plan together like that. And so you evaluate those probably a, a nanosecond and try to come up with a good resolution that works well. So what, how did you, how did this play out? What, uh, when she made the request, Charlie, save my life, 4,100 mm -hmm. smackers. That's all it takes. What, what, what did you do? Well, I had a stock portfolio and uh, nothing big or anything. I just start getting into it the year before. And then uh, I thought, well, maybe if I converted it all into that, I'd have enough. But the thing that I forgot what I forgot to take into account was every time you do this on your broker, you, you can only make one transaction on one particular stock item. And so what happens is, you know, I adjust enough with that amount. What happens is basically, well, you get dinged a fee. I think it's $5 per transaction. And so if you did this with 60 different stocks, you got $300 taken off your transaction right away. So that would put me under it. And I think I had, I think a little below four, 400 and something below that after that. And I thought, oh, this is going to go nowhere fast. And so then I, I got the um, increasing uh, urgency emails and then, that's when I started to think, okay, this is an emotional appeal. And, you know, she had literally written stuff like, oh, I can't believe you would leave me here to die. And, uh, of course, I wouldn't. And, uh, of course, I wouldn't if she literally was there in that type of urgency. And But the thing is, like, I mean, this would be a horrible time to bring up the fact that I actually haven't seen you in real time yet. So, I mean, to validify, uh, make the claim that I, I'm seeing what, and then uh, she became offended to the point where she, she said, uh, Oh, how offensive. Now you don't even think I exist. And so the, well, no, I mean, you obviously exist, but I don't know who I'm talking to. And, you know, there's no nice way to put it, but I mean, I don't know who I'm talking to. And so, you know, like I, I've heard of this and I tried to explain to her, I've heard of this being a way of life over there in that area of the world. It's so prevalent that uh, it, it's like, uh, uh, us here, you know, like uh, it's, uh, something like, you know, that like they would cheat on their taxes or something, you know, like here in the uh, United States or Canada or something like that. Although I'm not sure cheating in taxes is actually uh, really uh, <laughs> a valid. Other, you know, that's an oxymoron, that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. It's actually not their money anyway, right? When you think about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So that's the thing. It's like, uh, who do you really owe? And that's the thing. Um, and that's the thing. I mean, they're, I'm trying to come across. Yeah, exactly. Gaslighting. That's what I'm trying to co come across with is the fact that they're trying to appeal on an emotional basis. What we're trying to stick to on a very, 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 um, you know, logical pragmatic basis that we have to take if we don't if we lose sense of all our logic then you soon lose sense not only of all your logic but all your money too and so i mean uh, and if you there's that saying you know fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me and so I don't want to be. <laughs> I don't want to be experiencing that. So I mean, uh, Billy, it's Bill. you know, like, 
Mm -hmm. Sorry, just one second. Bill, you get the funny man. You get the funny man of the show award for this one. She could have hot wired any cars that were left behind. (laughs) 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 Oh, shit, Bill, you're funny. That's perfect. Yeah, that one's not very hard. I went to an Eskimo. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Probably. So, so okay. Um, so what happened? So you didn't send her the money. I'm gathering, and how did she react? I did not. You know, for a long time, uh, I didn't hear from her, and I part of me did wonder if she was dead or alive because you don't know. You know, I mean, it could have been she was telling me the truth, and um, I think a few weeks later an innocuous email came from her uh, asking me basically how I'm doing, what my plans are and, and, you know, nothing very, very short, succinct like that. And so I was actually surprised to hear from her. And so uh, at least answered my question. Okay. You're live, you know, so I don't have to worry about not sending the money, I guess, because I mean, the idea of sending the money is to actually put her in a position she, where she would have been able to get out of a drastic situation if she was mm-hmm. really in a drastic situation. So um, she obviously wasn't in a drastic situation, but was rather in no way that I could prove, but I could only infer that she was taking advantage of the wartime situation to potentially pad her pocketbook. Mm-hmm. Or whoever she might be. I don't mm-hmm. even know. Mm-hmm. So it, it just ended there? And that that was your experience with Jump for Love? Or how was that well, played out? How did it end? It was, it was almost ended there. I was tempted. I was wrestling with this so hard. Part the bad devil on my left shoulder. The devil on my right shoulder probably to- told me not to do it. But... I was actually going to send her an email to say, give her this URL and say, would you like to see a chat about this online, you know, and let her to be able to see the show. And so that's the bad devil that speaks to me on my left shoulder sometimes. So, I mean, I didn't bother to send it, but I mean, the the thought did occur to me. Yeah. Tell us, um, tell us more. um, Tell us the full story of what did she say when she sent the picture of this, this is just a picture, just so you know, this is just a picture of um, an abandoned yeah. village home. I see that I've seen thousands of them in Ukraine, abandoned village home. But what did she say when she emailed you this exactly? Uh, she said that this is the, our house that got, well, the, there's two things that she said. She said, first, a rocket hit the house. And then second, in a, a later letter, she said uh, the rocket nearly hit the house. So is it a direct hit or is it a glancing hit or is it a, uh, a close by hit kind of thing? You know, I, I didn't even know which. But I mean, I look at the uh, damage on that. There's nothing there that really screams huge structural damage. It's like... Um, you know, like if something had really been hit, there would be uh, more towards like, uh, uh, I guess, the doors, the windows caving into the roof kind of thing. You know, I mean, yeah. that strikes me as something that might have been just one of those uh, convenient. Send them a shot there. And and how do I know that this is not her address? I mean, I know what her address is based on the information that I got. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't actually get to see it on that house. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, we have a super chat here, which, um, of course, I have to address all super chats. Where is it here? Uh, I think okay. it's from Juan. He chatted us 20 bucks because he has a burning question. Uh, yeah, here we go. Um, Juan, explain a little bit better, though, because it's not entirely clear. It's like 80 percent. So growing up, I had this perception of couples in my mind. One, he must be rich. Two, he must have gotten her pregnant (laughs) three that couple looks good together he's asking you which is your preference please explain your answer thank you but Juan what do you mean 
which is your preference? That's the part that stumps me. I'm not sure exactly what you mean, Juan. Can you elaborate? What do you think he means, uh, Charlie? <laughs> oh, are you there, Charlie? Oh, is this is this oh, what Juan again? is saying? Uh, the three options that come to his yeah. mind about. Uh, did I understand yeah. that correctly? Yeah, I know. Um, uh, I'm asking oh, him to just elaborate. Coming. You know, uh, so we had some glitching going on here too. Uh, okay, growing up, I thing. had this perception of couples in my mind. Yeah, he must be rich. He must. That couple looks good together. Which is your preference? Well, I mean, one. If you had said, "Which of these do you think is you?" Then it would be clear. But which oh. is your preference? What does that mean, Juan? I mean, you're a very articulate guy, but you, you missed it on this one. Um, what? Ah, what? Here we go. What is his goal or is when he goes out with a woman? Again, what do you mean goal, Juan? Again, not clear. Is it clear for you, Charlie? Oh, what is the goal for when he goes out with a woman? I mean, that's a question in of itself you can answer. What's your goal when you... My intention for something? Yeah, I guess intention. Yeah. Marriage. Well, I mean, the first thing you have to do is like any mm -hmm. courtship, I mm -hmm. would think. I mean, first off, you know, there's a whole bunch that you cannot see. You can see a parent if, if there's enough attraction uh, between two people that they want to carry it on further... I've seen some very beautiful women who all they have to do is open their mouths and they become very ugly very fast. So, so here I we mean, go. Beauty we've isn't got, everything. We, we've got a qualification. Now it's clear finally. So he's asking, what, what preference is it that you want when you take your lady out? So there, the, the, the picture is this. People see you and your lady, and they ask themselves these questions. Hmm, oh. I wonder if he's rich. I wonder if, what was the other tip? Where's it? Uh, wonder if he's rich. I mean, it's a very theoretical question. There, mm -hmm. And I can't even find your super uh, uh, Does he go together? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, there's a lot to say. Like, uh, if it's a theoretical question, I, I can say this. I know of an older gentleman, much older gentleman, who surprised me. Uh, he was nearby my workplace, and uh, I know I know his son. And um, I remember um, he surprised me one day because I knew what his son's wife looked like. She was a beautiful blonde woman. Um, and then one day... In the BMW comes this beautiful brunette woman. And then I'm talking with this guy in the back alley, the older gentleman. And then uh, he surprised me. He said me something I didn't expect. I mean, she was about a 35-year-old woman and looked good, looked great. And then he uh, he told me, oh, yeah, that's my girlfriend. And he's about 85. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> And I uh, just like, what? Because I, I, I was thinking that maybe, uh, maybe this gentleman was starting to, you know, live uh, the way some, some religious sects might live, you know, like uh, with more mm -hmm. than one wife or something. You know, I thought maybe that. You was know, the, the interesting thing about you and I. Um, so you're 55. She's about 35. Mm -hmm. Is that right? No. How old yeah, is she? But, and how old are you again? About yeah, where there's about twenty years spread, maybe even twenty one. Right. So, so a twenty year spread with you and her, and a twenty year spread with my wife and I. So mm -hmm. that's the really interesting point here. And I, I I think Juan is kind to. I think what he's really trying to say here. That's why it's a little ambiguous his, the way he's phrased this. But I think really what the question Juan, you should be straightforward. I think the question really is. Do you mind that when people are looking at you and your lady, they're asking themselves, look, there's such a big the disparity. Only way I can, I, 
can respond. And it's like and you're glitching out. Ah, we lost well, Charlie. I understand what you're saying, but I'll tell you something. For many years, I thought my father was 14 years older than my mother. I le later learned later in life that I was mistaken, that he was actually 19 years older than my mother. So mm -hmm. um, all these years, you know, so I mean, the thing is, so, like, I remember when I was. And your mom and dad were just Canadian couple, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct, correct. But my, my father eventually got sick. He had brain hemorrhage, aneurysm. He had been uh, fighting that in the hospital for a very, very long time, like about nine years. And when he ultimately passed away. So, I mean, and then my mother after that, she just pretty much took solace in the bottle. And she always sought unfulfilling relationships there on after. And always where... Uh, the guy was not particularly available to her. And so, um, unfortunately, it just didn't work out for her. And so, you know, I mean, you got to decide how much you're willing to accept in terms of a uh, uh, person. Like, they, they, they had a lot of alcoholism involved in. So, I mean, that contributed a lot to the um, decline for lack of a better word, of the relationship. So I think he mm -hmm. pretty much didn't care whether she was there or not, way or the other. Cool she is or cool she's not. Yeah, I don't know if he's even still alive, but my mother and my father are no longer alive and haven't been for the length of time. So here's a good question um, on one, on, on as one for, super chat. As one. for what other people might be thinking, that's very hard. Yeah, I thought his internet was really bad. Well, we're going to say goodbye to Charlie. Um, thanks, Charlie. 